Hello everyone and welcome back to another Magical Moon video. I am outside the front of the house and the job is going to be replacing the outdoor floodlight but I'm also going to put one on either side of the canopy which I'll show you. So what that's going to do is give a really nice light out into the driveway and to where Mummy Moon makes the feeds up and also the other one facing the, where the Legends Barn is will illuminate that area there. So it's going to give a really nice big spread of light and it's going to be absolutely transformational because at the moment we're all walking about i live in my head torch but uh, we have phones and torches and all sorts of stuff just trying to get around and uh, do our day-to-day -day stuff so as i say another thing which is going to transform our lives thank you again i'm going to spin you around now and just show you what's what so this is the front of the house and as you can see up uh, there there's a joint box and there's this cable which is a bit roughly clipped to the wall goes there for our floodlight which illuminates the front Harold and Roger are here to give us a hand and then if we go along you can see it goes all the way along and then it's all just dangly wangly all the way along the front of the house so not very good at all bit rough and ready we're going to tidy it right up and make a proper job of it so let's kick on out there's been a slight change of plan the field that was going to be for the goats and the sheep I've always really liked that field and I think actually it's far more suited to the Shetlands both Kimmy and Totty again a bit like the goats they all need to come in because this time of year when the spring grass comes up it can cause havoc especially for Shetlands they really it is not good for them to have too much so that field's quite bald it's not a great field so it's perfect for those little Shetlands their little feet and their very small tummies that can become quite fat so I'm currently just making up their little house down there. So they're going to come in and they're going to have a little enclosed area. And we're going to go down. It'll be nice for Rue because he'll be able to go and groom them and do some stuff with them. Rather than having free ranging, which they like to do at the moment. They will come back out when the weather changes in winter. They can come and free roam again. But for the time being, for their own safety and for you know their health, we're going to get them in and put them in the, in the new field. So come with me. Oh, and we're going to give them one of your salt licks. And I think they're really going to enjoy that. So let's go and get their bed ready.
Good afternoon everybody and welcome to my bear room. This room we call the heart of the house because it really does have that feeling. It is like you walk in here and you can literally feel it. It is like the most kindest, loveliest heart. You know, you know when you meet somebody and you just know they're a lovely person? That is this room. You walk in here and you just know it straight away. And the reason I believe this is because it is absolutely crammed full of history. All the things that you can see were all once loved much loved members of someone's family or someone's past and I am a little bit of a magpie so we have Brocons and V Greniers here in France especially in summer there's lots of outdoor um, V Greniers that you can go to and you have for sale the most incredible things and I always go for the small things I go through the little drawers or the lunch boxes or the shoe boxes all the bits and pieces that nobody really looks at they're looking at the bigger stuff I don't I spend hours looking through these boxes to see if I can find much loved things that once upon a time meant something to somebody and nine times out of ten I'll always come home with a couple of bits and you know that they've been much loved because they're still they're okay they're in fantastic condition and you know just for whatever reason you know the person's probably passed away and the family don't know what to do with it and it ends up for sale so if it's lucky it ends up here with me and it all sits on my desk and all around the room and this whole room is absolutely full of things that once upon a time were loved and I believe all of that energy put together gives this room this amazing feeling, which is a room of calmness, kindness, softness, magic. It's all in here. And I believe that's truly, truly, truly what helps me restore these bears. So I'm going to show you a few bears that I've got in at the moment. I've got three bears that belong to other people and one bear that I brought from a brook on just the other day that I thought needed a little bit of mummy moon love. So the first bear that I've got is this lovely little chap. He's come in from a lady called Gail. He's being fixed up for a lovely chap called Bernard. And as you can see, he's looking a little bit sorry for himself. He, um, unfortunately, I think the first thing we can probably guess is his joints have gone. He's a fully jointed bear. So he's got joints in each of, each of his limbs here and his head is jointed as well. But as you can see over the years, all the love that he's had has caused him to become slightly um loose let's just say um he definitely needs a hip replacement i think um so here you should that these should be the joints should be against each other and nice and tight and the legs should lift up and the legs should come down but as you can see his legs are sort of hanging out to the side and the same with his arms and unfortunately his head's doing the same sort of thing so we need to look at his joints we need he's got a little hole behind his ear here where his ears fallen off so we'll put that back on and also what's very important with these bears as they get older and they've been cuddled and maybe that they've been um, stored or they've travelled or whatever they may have done, their stuffing, I find and have found, other restorers do it differently, but I have found with a lot of bears, it is a good idea if you're, if you, you know, if you're, um, if you know what you're doing to maybe look at either restuffing or adding to the existing stuffing to give the bear back its strength. Because as you can see, if I rejoint this bear, he's going to still be very loose because he's there's lots of slack in here because the stuffing inside has kind of almost they, it disintegrates it becomes nothing in him i'm thinking he's probably got wood wool and it feels like in the front he's got something called kapok kapok is a natural um filling it's a seed actually from the kapok tree it's very much like a um dandelion you know when they turn into the 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 oh, put myself on the spot now but the you know um you blow them 
and they all go everywhere. It's very much like that. Or a ball rush, you know, the stuff that's inside a ball rush and it all comes out is very much like that. So it's awful because it gets in your eyes, but it is a traditional feeling for bears and it's a very, very good one. So what I will probably suggest to his owner, I'll be giving you a call tomorrow, Gail, it's um, to maybe restuff him, keep some of his original stuffing if it's OK, but restuff him so he's nice and strong and put his, his new joints. He'll have to, I should imagine he's going to need new joints because feeling them, I think they're cardboard and they've given given way they're not strong anymore so he's going to need new new joints which nick will make for me um and he will he will look like he'll shine up like a new penny but as you can see he's got a bit of a bit of a saggy chin going on here he definitely needs refilling out he's going to look slightly different so it depends on gail and his owner how they want him to look i mean he will obviously he'll sit up straight his legs will sit up straight like this his back will be straight his head will be straight He'll have a stronger and longer nose because he's got quite a long nose. You just can't see it because it's obviously sunk back under here. Um, his eye, he's missing an eye. So we need to replace one of these eyes. So I've got lots of eyes. We'll find a replacement eye. Um, and he's obviously, his face has come away as well. So he need that putting back on. But what you'll find is um, sometimes they can look very different to how they, from when they arrived. So I'm hoping um, I'll speak to Gail and see what she wants. Because if she wants him to keep the the look of, you know, well-loved, then we have to really, really, you know, be very careful how, what we do to try and keep him looking like this. But if she wants him to look a little bit more like he's had a, you know, a restoration, a bit of a facelift, he obviously is going to look slightly different because just the shape of him is going to change just purely from the amount of stuffing that he's lost that all that has, has disintegrated inside him. Sometimes when you open the back of them and you open it up, this will just come out as powder. So it's, you know, it's just years and years of love and years and years of, you know, just different elements. Maybe you've got damp, we could have got wet, you know, all of the different things that could have happened. But he definitely um, needs a little bit of loving. So he's come to the right place. So I'm looking forward to starting him. So I will give you a call, girl, in the next couple of days to sort him out. We have another lovely bear here who, again, has come for restoration. He actually has had quite a long journey to get to us. He was he came from the UK and he actually came out to the Somme with my mum. The lady that owns him drove to meet my mum, um, gave him to my mum. Um, my mum brought him out to the Somme. He had a holiday in the Somme for a week and then he's come back here. And his owner's coming in June to pick him up. So it gives me a little bit of time to make sure that, you know, I get him just right. So I'm going to give her a call and we're going to talk about how, how we're going to restore him. He's actually, his stuffing is fantastic. His face is a really good shape. He's not actually going to need too much. The only thing that he's got really is his, um, his pads here are very, very worn and the, the wood wool is starting to poke through. And again, on his foot here, you can see that. So sometimes the wood wool, after many, many years of service, it does start to hinder the bears and starts to become quite an issue. So again, it depends on what um what his owner would like me to do, but you know, it may be worth some stuffing him with K-pop, a bit of a softer stuffing to just give him um a bit more of a chance because I can't strengthen his fabric, unfortunately, because, he, you know, his fabric is his fabric. And the only way you can do that is to completely take him apart, um, um, take all his seams apart and then line the fabric and then rebuild him and put him back together again. And, you know, as good as any bear restorer in the world is, you know, fantastic. But you, you, it may not he might not go back looking like he looks now. He won't be something like he looks now. But. You know, I really do try and I've done that with one bear and that's because there was not a lot left of him. And, you know, he looked beautiful when he was done, but it was a real stressful situation because you have to remember these are people's friends They, you know, they the, these guys know people's secrets. They tell them everything and they're much loved members of the family, you know. So the, the pressure that I'm sort of under when I have bears like this is that I've got to get it right. So there's lots of communications with the owner and it's doing the right thing by the bear. And with him, we're, you know, it was preserving and restoring and depends on his owner you know he can again i can go full at it and he could be bright yellow and have a lovely um color his nose would be all dark again and he'd look absolutely fantastic or we can restore him to look like he looks now so you can't see any different but you know he's stronger so again it's what he's up to his owner so i'll be talking to his owner as well in the coming weeks and then we have mr michael p's elephant let's show you him here he is oh so this chap came, anyone that watched the rest start when I started to restore him, um, he really was in a bad way. Um, he's absolutely full of holes. His fabric, he's a stife elephant. His fabric is so brittle that when you put a pin in it, it just disintegrates. So he is really, really taking me a lot of time because I'm having to be very careful how I restore him. He had um, no tusks. He had no ears. Um, he had a big hole in the end of his um, trunk, which we've managed to 
fill at the moment um that still needs quite a lot of work to try and blend it in because at the moment it's sort of quite in your face but it will it will blend in quite nicely and as i say his little tusks they need a little bit of work around the up by his cheeks but we're getting there he's um he's been a a challenge because he he just you know as you, as you touch him he just falls apart so yeah he's a, he's a very very old old bear and he really is he's going to sit on rollers which i do have i have them here if i just get them out i'm gonna put, put lots of stuff on top of them so here are his rollers so he'll go on those on front and back make sure he's in the camera on the front and the back um i put these on once and checked because i got carried away um and they look really really cool so we're going to put those on nick will help me do that and uh, yeah to make sure they fit in nicely and then uh hopefully when he goes home to michael he'll last for many generations and he can be passed down as a bit of a bit of a family heirloom so there he is all done put his little cardigan back on so he doesn't get cold and then as i said i go to lots of brocants and um, v greniers and sometimes something just catches your eye and this little chap i just was he's got to come home so the other day nick and i and my very good friend sham went to a beautiful place called the brock cath who i'm going to go and film for you so you can see because it really is just mesmerizing this place is incredible um and in there was this very very special little chap so he was sitting there i think he was definitely destined to become a moon he's lost an ear he's got, got absolutely beautiful fabric so once he's all brushed out he's going to be lovely but what really sold him to me was his clothes because his clothes have all been handmade and you can just see the love that some that someone's gone into to create this little outfit for him he's absolutely beautiful and I caught him just in time because he's just about to lose his little pink button but I'll be able to sew that back on now and save him and um, the other one unfortunately has gone but I've got plenty of buttons at the front there and I'm sure I'll be able to find something equally as lovely so he's he's just really really sweet and special so he'll have a new if I can, I'll get him a new ear because I think he'd probably quite like that. Um, his eyes are in perfect condition. His face is actually very lovely. So he's only really going to need a bit of a brushing out. And um, yeah, he feels pretty good with his stuffing as well. He's not a very old bear, but he's obviously been much loved. So we'll just give him a good going over and uh, yeah, get him feeling special and special and pretty again. So yeah, he's just lovely. I was so chuffed to find him. It's always a real treat when you find one of your own that you can restore. So yeah, so he came home with us. So as you can see... I have lots of bears to be getting on with at the moment um, and what I will do in the coming weeks and months I will put together um, a bear restoration video on each of the bears that I do and you can see how they how they progress. The first one that will be being done is this little chap because the lady is in France and she needs him home fairly soon for a very special birthday and this chap will be just after but I've got till June and I don't want to rush him I need to spend a bit of time with him and Michael's is an ongoing Whenever I get 10 minutes, I come in and I spend a bit of time. You wouldn't believe how much time, like the tiniest hole, will take me an hour and a half to fix. So, yeah, he does take a lot of time. He'll be here for a while, but he, I'm slowly getting there with him and I can't wait to get him finished because he's going to be really, very, very special. But anyway, I'm going to go because I need to edit this video for you and I've got to put the horses to bed and I'm waiting for a hay delivery and I'm really jumpy because I keep thinking I can hear the dogs bark and then I can't. And I'm filming. So I'm going to go get the video done. And um, yeah, we shall see you very, very soon. Bye bye.